everyone out to our first Bible study together. Um, I know we got some visitors with us tonight. Preaching Susie Manuel's here from Greensboro. I forget this young lady's name. She's here visiting with us tonight. Thank y'all for being with us this afternoon. Let's all stand this afternoon and uh, sing him again. Number 378. <laughs> So the good thing, I guess, that I like about Revelation is when I start studying it or reading about it, I get excited, you know? And so by me being a preacher, um, I will try to, and I told Harry this a few weeks ago, to restrain myself 
and not take off preaching, okay? And we will try to, to teach it and study it and look it over. But Revelation 21, verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, and, and I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will get unto him that is the uh, that is a, a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So as we read these first eight verses and look at it, there's four or five things that will study and look at during this time. One is that he's talking about the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth. Um, he's talking about the new city of God, which is the new Jerusalem that will be built. Uh, he's talk to, talking about the, the, uh, the intimate fellowship that we will have with God at that time. Uh, and he said it was all declared with a loud voice. Um, he also talks about the presence and the fellowship of God when this takes place. Uh, he also talks about the fourth thing is the, the, per the perfection of all things, which is life will be perfected. Everything will be perfect. Uh, the assurance that God is going to uh, perfect all things. Uh, he, he, God gives us uh, assurance. His word gives us assurance. His sovereignty gives us assurance that everything will be perfect and perfected during this time. And then the last part is he talks about the citizens, okay, and, and those uh, who thirst for life, those who overcome, uh, which means those that have accepted him, accepted Christ, uh, they will inherit all things, and, and they will be called the sons of God. And then at the last part, he's talking about the ones that are rejecting him. And their faith, of course, uh, will show their identity of who they are. Uh, they will be called out, and that will be the second death, and that will be the lake of fire, the ones that won't accept Christ. And so that's really the five things that we're going to look at through these scripture right here. There's a couple of questions, though. And during these couple questions, we can kind of interact here, and, and there's no wrong answer. It's just a thought sometimes, and I don't know if you've ever thought it, but I have. I've thought about, you know, what will eternity be like? Do you ever, do you think of that? You know, I don't believe it's one of those pictures that I've seen. I don't think we're going to be angels just floating around with a little heart and stuff. I've never read that. You know, he says he's creating a new heaven and a new earth for us to live on. What do y'all think? Have you ever thought of, has anybody got any thoughts they'd like to share of what you think eternity will be like? Perfect place to be. That's right. There's a lot of things that takes place, Larry, we don't even think about it. it won't exist anymore you know because it'll be perfect you know what will what will it be like to live with God forever and ever to actually be able to go 
to that new Jerusalem and, and see him and be a part of that. Makes you want to shout. It Thank does. You. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it makes us want to stand up and say, Lord, come quickly. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, because what a great day that's going to be. <coughs> knowing that the sickness that some of us has been going through, we'll never worry about that again. You know, so so this chapter of Revelation here tells us in the very beginning right here that, that all the bad and negative things of this world is going to be conquered and destroyed. All things. All the pollution, all the impurities of the world, um, all the ungodliness, you know, all the suffering and pain, all the corruption, all the death, there'll be no more death for us to experience because death would cause hurt and there'll be no more hurt. You know, it's all going to be erased, eliminated and done away with during this time. And the day is coming, I thought about this, the day is coming when where there'll be no more impure government. There'll be no more corrupt religions being forced on people. There'll be no more bad leaders. There's only going to be one. You know, there'll be no more pain or suffering. There'll be no more sin or temptations out there. When, when the new earth and the new heaven is built and we're out working for God, there's going to be no more sinful temptations to make us have evil thoughts or bad thoughts about things that would make us sin. All that will be gone. So this is, I think, the glorious message of Revelation when you read it. And after we do 21, we'll jump back to the beginning. I just wanted to start here because when I read this in 21, you know what I think sometimes? I think, okay, everything that I'm going through is going to be worth it. You know? Amen. It's, just hold on. You know, it's going to be worth it one day. So, God is going to take Satan and all the ungodly parts of this world and destroy them. All of that will be destroyed. God's going to make a new heaven and a new earth, and he says he's going to make all things new. And when he does, there will be no more. And you've heard this. We've even sung songs about this, about no more tears or sorrow or crying or, or pain or death in our life. All those things will pass away and be done. It will be destroyed with Satan and, and, all of, um, and all the ungodly things that goes on in this world. So this, this is the great subject uh, of this scripture uh, of 21 and when it talks about the new heaven and the new earth because verse 1 talks about the new creation and 2 talks about the new city uh, 3 is talking about the relationship 4 and 6 is 4 through 6 is talking about the perfection of all things and then 6 through 8 is talking about the citizenship basically where people are going to be <coughs> So 21.1, when he's talking about the heaven and the earth being new, there will be a new creation. Uh, the new heaven and new earth, the heaven and the new heavenly bodies in space. And I don't know if you <coughs> think about that the way I have and all that would pass away. Tim and I, just the other night, um, we may have went home from here. We got home, we didn't have any power. We left from here, and we didn't have any power. And we just went out and sat in the backyard for like five hours or so, until like 10, 30, 11 o'clock for the power to come on. We just sat there and talked, and looked up at the stars, and you know, every now and then you could just see something go through the spaces, you know, like a shooting star or something like that. <coughs> Well, all the heavens above, the sun, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, all of that will be destroyed and remade. All of it will. 
and God's going to make a new heaven. And, and think what this will mean. There will be no more thunderstorms. There will be no more hurricanes. There will be no more uh, tornadoes. There will be no more destructive rain or weather. Uh, no more stars or solar systems that are burnt out. And that's what we were talking about the other night. Because of that shooting star and because of the stuff that we see or hear about, you know, in the universe and atmosphere like that, it's imperfect. But he's going to make all things perfect. And all of that will be recreated. Everything will. And it will be perfect. All the heavens above will be remade, created anew, and made alive. But think about this right here. You know how beautiful it is, and we were talking about that the other night, how beautiful it was just to sit there and take it all in and look at all the lightning bugs and the stars and stuff that was going on in the sky. But think of how glorious and beautiful the heavens will look when we look up at a starry night. But imagine what they will look like when God creates them and all of his glory and, and, and magnificent presence will be part of that universe. Imagine how great that's going to look. I can't imagine. I don't think our minds can comprehend how great it's going to be and the glory that we will see from that. All things within the universe will be alive and reflect the glory and splendor of God himself. Everything will reflect him and his glory. Everything will. Um, the universe will be, it will be perfect. It will be a place where nothing burns out, wears down, or wastes away. So think about what it will mean to have a universe full of living planets, stars, and a solar system just for us to look at. I, when I think about those things, I can't. I've seen some beautiful things traveling all over the world. You know, some beautiful land. Um, but I can't imagine how beautiful this is going to be. And being able to see that. And God's doing that for who? For us. For no one else. But everyone that's sitting in here that believes on him, he's doing that for you. And um, so when we see this, we can't imagine his glory and his beauty. I mean, it's it's beyond that. But but note that the, uh, the scripture here declares that the heaven is to be remade and recreated into a new heaven. So the earth's going to pass away. Uh, there's things uh, that's going to be part of the new earth. Um, the present earth is defective. It's cursed. Um, the earth suffers. You know, it's under all kinds of natural disaster. I think every day we hear about some kind of earthquake or volcano eruption or some storm or flood or heat or famine or disease or death that's happening or causing upon the earth. So that's why he has to destroy that and remake it. Because it's not perfect. I think it was just a um, week before last there was a big earthquake down around Columbia, South Carolina. We were, Lynn and I were talking about that today. A few hours later there was a big aftershock from it and stuff. So I don't ever remember hearing an earthquake happening down around Columbia, South Carolina. And I think a year or two ago, there was a big one over in Sparta. And, mm -hmm. You know, I, I know all of y'all heard about that. And uh, it seems like it's popping up places that I've never heard of before. You know, different, uh, different areas that disasters are happening. But there'll be no more disaster or no more destruction. There'll be and I remember when I was a kid, always, and Tina makes fun on me now because I don't like going without shoes. You know, I don't know. 
not three years old, Junior. I can walk across the parking lot. <laughs> but when I was a kid, we used to get out and run through that pasture, you know, and if you thought about it, there'll be no more thorns or thistles. <laughs> and I used to hate those things. If you ever run across, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's why you're laughing. You run across that pasture and plant down on one of those thistle things, boy, and you were done for. I mean, you just hit the ground screaming trying to get those out of your feet and, and uh, you know think about it. there'll be no more unfertile or unproductive soil no more hunger or thirst in the land there'll be no more disease or erosion or death on the land I mean for all of y'all that plant could you imagine what it's going to be like then when you plant crops that we're probably going to get from that because if the ground's perfect everything that grows is going to be perfect right you know and I don't know anybody and, you, and I'm sure you don't either I don't know anybody eats more tomato sandwiches than me <laughs> I mean I'm counting a hundred during the summer probably I mean I'll eat them every day if I've got them at the house but I can imagine what that's going to look like, you know, to see. When I was working in Scotland, and I told her, I said, you should saw what the fields and everything and, and the gardens and everything look like over there, you know, because they get a lot of rain. And one day, I'll tell you a quick story, and we'll go on. One day, I'm in the plant, training some folks and running it, and all of a sudden, they shut everything down and go outside. I'm like, where are y'all going? They said, the sun's out. <laughs> you would take a break and go outside for a little while. The sun hasn't been out for two weeks. I've been there. The sun comes out and stop working. So, but everything was beautiful around the gardens and everything was really beautiful. But the earth here will flourish and be fruitful, bearing all the good that can be imagined. I can't imagine how much good is going to be there. And it's going to bear. So think how beautiful and green and lush and productive we're going to see, you know, uh, and how fruitful. Think how peaceful it's going to be and how comfortable it will be, you know, and on a good fall day in Warrensville, not in Wilkes County. You can go out and get in your chair and just take a big nap out in the backyard. You can't do that in Wilkes. It's still... He needed it to go 100 down there. But that is so comfortable. You know, you go over to the campground and nobody's around. And you get out there in your chair and take a nap. That's hard to beat. You know, so imagine how comfortable that's going to be for us when all this takes place. Um, a perfect earth is beyond our comprehension. We can't imagine a perfect earth. Because think about it, from the time we were born, what have we ever seen and heard? Wars, right? War, and um, something being destroyed, or some kind of famine, where people are catching some kind of sickness. It seems like as soon as one gets over with, another one pops up. It's been our entire life, right? We've always heard of that, and we'll never hear of those things again. Never. And but it's exactly what scripture declares is going to happen. God is going to create a new earth as well as a new heaven for us. And then Matthew 24, 35 said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Everything will be destroyed except one thing. God's words. It'll always be the same. It always has been. Everything in our life has changed as we've grown. But God's word has never changed. And it never will change. Psalms 102, 25, 6, and 7 says, Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Thou shalt perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax 
old like a garment as a vesture. Thou shalt change them, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Isaiah 66, 22 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before thee, saith the Lord, so shall your seed in your name remain. So if we believe on him and have him in our life, he says that everything will change and he will recreate everything just for you. But your name, because you believe on him, will stay the same. You will still be who you are, the son of God or the daughter of God because you've accepted Christ. And I don't know how you feel, but I like to think on these things. Don't you? I mean, I like to think about what I'm going to get to see, what God's going to have for me, you know? And, and think about, like, the new creation and the new heaven and the new earth of how great it's going to be. The new Jerusalem, there'll be it'll be a new city for God. Uh, the holy city, the Jerusalem. The idea is that the new Jerusalem will be the capital city. Um, the new heaven and earth, it'll be a place where the very presence of God is symbolized. He'll be in the new city. Uh, and all of his majesty. God's presence, of course, will be manifested everywhere in the new heavens, no matter where we're at. God's presence will be with us. But, but when he creates the new Jerusalem, the new city, that's where God's presence will be. That's where he will be. That's where we will go to to worship and to praise him is in that city. But the holy city will be, it'll give believers a place um, to which to identify to serve God is in the new Jerusalem and, and throughout the universe there will the next verse kind of shows that the heavenly city uh, is the tabernacle the very presence of God that comes down to dwell with man the new Jerusalem is discussed in detail you'll see in that in this next verse right here but I think the point in this verse is to show that God has prepared his own capital city of on earth where he will be and his presence will be. And that's the New Jerusalem. And it will apparently be from the New Jerusalem that Jesus Christ here will rule the whole universe from that New Jerusalem and require his servants, which is his believers, you and I, uh, to occasionally visit and report the work that we'll do for him throughout the land. We'll come back to worship him. We will continually worship Christ. But there will be a new Jerusalem where he will rule from, that we will go worship him at, as believers. And we all, everyone there, will be believers. So this visit here and report, uh, the Lord's throne will sit there and there shall rule and he will rule and reign for eternity. Now the issue we have today is we always see a beginning and an end. And I don't think sometimes when we say eternity, how long that will be. I mean, it's forever. There's no end. There's not going to be an age, you know, to where I'm 100 years old, I'm probably getting towards the end of my eternity. That's not going to happen. You'll have a perfect body. Everything will be perfect. There'll be no age. And you'll reign and rule with him forever. 
God has it built in heaven and then moves it to earth. Note also that it said that uh, to be as beautiful prepared as the bride to her husband. Now let me point you, this is for the men. Why do you think that was written? As beautifully prepared as a bride is for her husband. I'll tell you my version. As long as I dated her, and we've been married 30 years, I always tell her how pretty she is. All the time, as much as I can, don't I? I'll say, you look pretty today. You know? And, um, but the day that we got married, and you remember this, man, and your bride, you see her for the first time. Was that not the most beautiful sight you had ever seen in your life? It was. That's what he said. To be as beautifully prepared as a bride is for her husband. Because when he saw that, it took your breath away. You're like, God, look what God's given me. I think that's why that was written. For us to remember that. So this point both to the beauty of the city and to our longing desire to have God's presence right here on earth with us. Remember that Jesus Christ told his apostles that he was going away to prepare a place for them. There is a possibility that he was referring to his preparing the place for New Jerusalem. They will be with him. When he told his apostles, I'm going to go prepare a new place for you, they'll be with him in New Jerusalem. I truly believe that as he rules and reigns the whole universe from that place. We only got through the first two. So I told you, we'll be in it a while. Anybody have anything you want to add? Talk about? stopped by the house yesterday and sold me a gallon of blackberries. Mm. Big. I'm going to do that big. And somebody gave me a recipe today to make a cover. I'm going to do that Friday. But uh, I don't know what he was thinking. But he thought he could go to the fence and reach over and pet Tucker. <laughs> and Tucker's got the fence in his mouth trying to pull it down. <laughs> and he said, son, your dog's about to eat me up. I said, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> so let's do a prayer request, praise reports. Uh, I talked to Larry Blevins right before church. So let's remember Bert. She's got that sinus and ear infection. So let's pray for her. He's with her this afternoon. heard on the way to church uh, Larry Lewis different Larry from what we got back here but 
passed away a few minutes ago, and that he's married to Barbara's first cousin. Lives on Rich Hill. Used to be a milkman. Is he the one that's been on the obituary? No. No, he just died, he just died a few minutes ago. Yeah. That's Barbara's cousin, Larry Lewis? No, it's my first cousin's husband. First cousin. He had a massive heart attack this afternoon. Roy Barr family. Roy Barr. I worked with him and his wife at Pentecost. several family members that are sick various things um, the Jerry Rowland family yes. Jerry Rowland. and also the other day I went on a call and the lady said please have your church praying for me and she didn't know what her name given we just went to church mm -hmm. to pray for her let's remember Corbin uh, Alex and Crystal mm -hmm. Lucy's Tatus Friday Friday, Friday. Please pray for Donnie. Pray for Donnie. Thank the Lord the COVID didn't hurt Barbara and I too bad. Yeah. Yeah, we're glad you're back. Glad to be back. How's Carolyn? She's doing better. She still tested positive last night, but she's doing better, so I think everything's going the right direction, I believe. <clears throat> a scare Friday night. Um, I received a text message for a call in Watauga for a cardiac arrest. And some, it's, something told me, look at the address. And I looked, and it was for a family member. Mm. And I couldn't reach anybody. But thank the good Lord, it was just a sinkable episode, and she was breathing. But until I heard that, it was like, not knowing which family member it was, but knowing that it was family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Family members and, and friends, when you get that, it's so hard. I had a, uh, probably been about five years ago, a friend at school, about 10 minutes after seven, one morning they yelled at me and I ran down the hall and he collapsed with a cardiac arrest. I ended up shocking him four times to his back. It was so hard. It was so hard. You know, you see your dream and you know him and he's your friend. It's just really hard, I know. I'd like for you to remember the Nancy Miller family. She uh, was one of our classmates that we graduated with. She passed away. Nancy Miller. Miller. Well, she's a Woods, but she's a Miller name. My neighbor Gary did it. She said a couple of weeks ago. She's got cancer. Gary Gooch. It's G O U G E. We'd remember a church if we can continue to grow and yeah. be witnesses to right. save souls. Amen. We've had some visitors about every Sunday, you know, I think. And, and uh, Sunday night, we went out and, and uh, looked at some, watched some fireworks there in town. And, and probably we had this whole group of people around us. We were bragging on the church and telling everybody about it. There's two or three families there said they're going to try their best to be here Sunday. So, I, I know um, Dan and Lisa has been coming every Sunday. I know they would like Virgil Bumgarner and Joe Handy. That's their 
Lisa's dad and Dan's dad. Um, Joe's had a severe stroke and he's trying to recover from that. And Virgil has a real bad case you know, of dementia and he's in a nursing home in Boone. So pray for them. James B. Shoemate will start his uh, chemo and radiation on the 18th. And we remember him and Brenda. You say J.C. Shoemate? Shoemate, yes. Will he be doing his treatments up here? I don't know where. Edith Osborne, she's been having some tests made. Bobby's wife, Edith. Mm -hmm. Osborne. Matthew Burr. Yes, what about Matthew? Matthew Burr. Matthew Greer. friend who's undergoing chemo. Best friend is doing chemo, remember her? She's doing good, she's got a real positive attitude. Mm -hmm. Anyone else in credit reports or anything? We continue to remember my husband, Harold. Harold? Let's all gather to altar this afternoon and we will close it all in prayer. Okay. Brother Lane, if you will start it, Brother Lane, you'll finish it for us.